In this video, I will look at the tool presets, how to use them, and how to modify them to produce different effects. If you look at all the tools, you can see that there are an awful lot of them. And it would not be a bad question to ask why so many, when in traditional painting we can often get away with one or two brushes. Well, one answer is that even though we can get away with far fewer brushes in traditional painting, we do use a lot of techniques, like wetting the paper before applying the paint, for example. In digital painting we need different brushes, or at least different settings to our brush, in order to achieve a similar effect. Which leads to the second answer, and that is that most of the brushes are just variants on the one brush. I've supplied them because it's a lot easier to pick a brush that's called, say, wet wash, than to get a wet wash effect, and then to pick another brush called wet on dry, thick and thin, say, to get a wet on dry effect, than to modify the brushes as we paint. You will find that you have some favorite brushes or some favorite variants of your own, and that you only occasionally use the other brushes. But then you try to achieve an effect like rust, and you may find that a brush like dry on dry, flat, camel, foreground, background variation is just the man for the job. At any rate, even though I will go through a few of the brushes and tools with you, the best way to get to know them is to play around with them, and even better, to paint with them. If you do develop variations of your own, that you find good, then I would very much appreciate you sending them, sending them to me and I will add them to the existing set so that others can benefit from them. The Action uh, Make Watercolor Paper selects a brush called Wash Clean Edge, no variation. This is the kind of stroke this brush produces. As you can see, it has no variations at all, not hue, not brightness, not saturation. However, you can make it thin or thick, depending on the stylus pressure. This is an excellent brush to use to apply a flat wash, especially if you want good, clean edges, as you would get, for example, if you had wet an area of the paper before applying paint. If I apply an edge to this brush stroke, you will see that we get a very good clean edge. Action, make edges. And first of all, you can see that there's a good edge there. And if I increase the opacity, you can see it even more clearly. If we select a different brush, like the wash clean edge, for example, then we get a similar effect, but this time we also get brightness or paint dilution variation, which is controlled using the stylus pressure. So gently, more darkly, very gently. This brush gives a very realistic simulation of a traditional wash. Either by altering the stylus pressure, as in here, or by painting over an ex existing stroke like this. So the first stroke, lift the stylus, second stroke. We can get the effect of wet paint onto wet paint. By altering the um, stylus pressure, we can get more of an effect of paint flowing. But with this particular brush, putting down a new stroke on top of the existing paint gives an edge, as you can see, which is something we don't want. To soften and let the paint flow, we can use a blender, for example, the smudge fade tool. Here. If 
by increasing the size a bit, I can increase the effect. We can get a very good effect of blending and flowing. And we can increase it here too, for example. Once you've picked a brush that you're going to use for a while, and also a blender, then you can move from one to the other simply by hitting the B key for the brush, like this, and the S key for the smudge tool, like this. This makes it a lot quicker to paint. For example, select the brush, paint a bit, paint a bit more, select the smudge tool, some smudging, select the brush by hitting the B again, smudge tool, and so on. You may also wish to use an eraser repeatedly, say the eraser scatter. And again, once you've selected this tool, which you can see the selection here, Photoshop remembers it, and whenever you hit the E key, the eraser scatter will be selected. So let's hit the B for the brush, paint, S for the smudge tool, and E for the eraser. This particular eraser gives a, a, a sense of added water. Smudge tool, soften and wet it, and so on. I suggest you just check out all of the wash brushes first. These ones here, as these will be the main brushes you'll use for watercolor painting. Some brushes, like the Wash Squirrel Soft, will give a very soft wash, especially if you make the brush bigger. So here it's quite small. Make it bigger. Press the wrong key. And we get this lovely soft wash with very soft edges. Other brushes, like the Fractal Grainy, will give this sort of cloud-like effect. If you pick a brush like the uh, Wash Splatter, you may find that the hue is wrong, or seems wrong. This is probably because the color variation, or sorry, color dynamics, um, has been turned on in the brush controls. If you don't want this effect, then just turn it off, and you will be back to the pure color you selected. Turning on or off the brush controls can have a dramatic effect on the brush strokes. For example, with the wash square brush selected, let's see what happens when the controls are altered. So this is the, the brush uh, with uh, as supplied. Uh, let's turn off um, shape dynamics. This doesn't make a huge difference. Scattering. Not a huge difference. Texture. Not a huge difference. Dual brush. A very big difference. Okay. So let's go back now and turn uh, shape uh, scattering back on with um, dual brush off. Now we get an even bigger difference. Texture back on. There is definitely a difference there. There's more scattering, a slightly different look. Then transfer off. It's hard to know exactly, but you can see anyway that there are significant differences. And let's say if we turn 
color dynamics on and increase the hue jitter a bit. Well, now we're getting a very different brush. So you can see that uh, simply by turning on and off these controls, um, <clears throat> we can achieve uh, really something which goes from a wet on dry effect to a very wet uh, sort of effect and one with a color variation in this case. The wet on dry brushes are normally used for detail work. They all have the characteristic of wet paint that flows into the paper hollows and a clean transition between the paint and paper. This brush, the wet on dry thick and thin squirrel, is typical. It's one of the bristle brushes introduced in Photoshop CS5. And what's very nice about it is that it behaves very much like a real watercolor squirrel brush. That is, a very soft brush that squishes and widens easily. If you don't want the effect of thinner paint going to thicker paint as the stylus pressure is increased, as well of course as the widening of the brush, then just turn off the transfer pen pressure control. In Photoshop CS6, you can achieve this simply by clicking on, the, on this icon here. The control is off. Control is on. Each of these brushes gives a distinctive effect. For example, the wet on dry flat fan looks like this. Again, the best thing to do is to play around with the wet on dry brushes and as you paint, you will find that one is better for this effect while another is better for another effect. The dry on dry brushes all have the effect that the paint will tend not to flow into the hollows of the paper because the brush has been loaded with quite dry paint. For example, the dry on dry brush square looks like this. Again, by changing a few controls we can change the brush a lot. Turn on shape dynamics, for example, and we go from a flat brush to a pointy brush. Reduce the depth, for example, and you now have an even drier brush. For very delicate work you could use a dry rigger. This. Or indeed you could use a wet rigger. Both of these brushes have <coughs> color dynamics turned on, so by turning it off, you can then get back to a pure color without the color variation. If you're switching between brushes often, then you may find it easier to use the tool preset control here instead of the one here because the panel stays open as you paint. <clears throat> the pens can be used for various effects such as Sumi. Normally the opacity might be set to 100. Uh, Chinese dry ink, Chinese fine ink, bamboo leaf, and then just ordinary pens for 
detail work. To sketch or for fine detail, you could use the 2B pencil or the pencil sketcher. The 2B pencil, pencil sketcher, it's a finer pencil, it's very nice. The dry wax pencil is a nice brush that can be used to good effect for detail in quite a few situations. The remaining tools are the blenders or smudge tools, the erasers, and then the miscellaneous special effect brushes down here. But as this video is getting quite long, I'll leave all of these to the next video. Thanks for watching.